people are pure evil and life has no meaning and all of these other depressing beliefs, which is the easy path. And let's be honest, we all tend to think like that sometimes. If we're honest with ourselves, okay? And if you're sitting here watching this and thinking, I never think anything like that, tell me how. And I don't necessarily believe you. My name is Jack and welcome to States Unlocked, the place to learn about social psychology, human behavior, and also learn practical tips on how you can improve your life. If you'd like to understand yourself and others better, be sure to hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'm going to get on with the topic of this video, which is framing and the meaning we create out of situations. The meanings we make out of situations and the way we frame particular situations is incredibly important in terms of how we integrate the experiences and how we experience what has happened. Now, it can be incredibly difficult when we have a habit of thinking negatively, which let's be honest, most of us do because we have brains which are wired for survival, meaning that we can be prone to negative thinking. Cognitive distortions are a very real thing and they affect most of us. I believe that most people struggle with their mental health to some degree or another. Most people just don't talk about it. A lot of the time we can believe things that are just completely way off base, but they have a visceral sensation and perhaps we've experienced this thing before and we've got a lot of practice thinking this negative thing. It feels very real and it can really create a lot of pain and suffering in our lives. Sometimes just thinking positive or being told to think positive is just plain annoying because it doesn't necessarily work. It's all about the meaning we've created from a situation. Obviously the meanings we create have a massive impact and if you have practiced thinking that you are defective for years, it's not necessarily an easy task to just say, that's not true. However, I would strongly encourage you to actually start engaging in the beliefs that you have. Take stock of the beliefs you're thinking unconsciously, because most of the time these thought processes are unconscious and it can create a lot of suffering where we don't necessarily need to suffer. Cognitive behavioral therapy talks all about this, about how the way we think about a thought, the way we actually frame it, creates the emotion. And honestly, it's true. When we start thinking about something differently, it can often change the emotion. So let's say that you have been neglected and you think that you have a family that don't love you. First of all, identify what you are thinking. Then identify the emotion that is actually coming up. Then once you've got that information, you can actually start to engage in questioning if this is the most accurate belief that you could be having about the situation. Oftentimes it isn't, and it's just because we've been practicing a thought for a long time. Sometimes we can think that it's impossible to overcome certain problems because we've experienced them for year on year on year on year. Now I'm not gonna sit here and say, yes, it's gonna be easy to change this kind of stuff, but we must believe that it is possible because it is possible. It is entirely possible. People change these kinds of things all the time, but it doesn't necessarily happen overnight. And it certainly doesn't happen without work and conscious effort because we need to actually put the effort into reframing stuff and then actively repeating the process because our brains are going to want to go back to the old known patterns because they're safe, they're well worn down trodden paths that in our circuitry and our neural pathways are basically honed for these beliefs. So in order to create a new belief, we need to actually create a new path. And let's take an old cobblestone street when a horse and carriage was going over it, initially it was really bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. And then as the horse and carriage goes over this over and over and over again, it actually starts to create grooves in the ground and it's a lot easier and a lot smoother. You have to go sometimes through this up and down to begin with until things get easier. The thing about mental health is that it is not a fixed place. You know, you can have a good day, you can have a bad day, you can have a awful day you can have a terrible day you can have a month of terrible days etc and it's it can be really difficult sometimes and I want you to know that I have difficult times I really do and I know pretty much everyone does I'm telling you that because sometimes we can really think that we are so struggling and suffering and everyone else out there is having a good time with things and if you've had a bad childhood you can think oh well I had a bad childhood so therefore I struggle but someone who had a good childhood good childhood because we you know there's a lot to be said about that but who didn't go through abuse didn't go through neglect etc they're automatically going to have great mental health not necessarily true there are a lot of people who have good childhoods but then their mental health goes bad later because they meet an abusive partner and 
they start feeling bad about themselves or they look a certain way which doesn't fit in with society's view of what's beautiful or they do fit in with that but they don't believe it because they were bullied in school but they had a great family life. There's so many variables and things to, that could affect someone's mental health in a negative way but the important thing to remember for all of us is that our brains are neuroplastic meaning that they are able to change okay really the sky is the limit and in terms of the meanings we create about things there is a book by Viktor Frankl which is very famous called Man's Search for Meaning this man witnessed horrendous things in concentration camps he actually experienced terrible things if you haven't read the book I'd strongly recommend you to read it because it really helps you to actually really conceptualize that the meanings we create create our experiences. This is someone who went through a lot of trauma and witnessed terrible things. The meanings he could have created from that are that, you know, people are pure evil and life has no meaning and all of these other depressing beliefs, which is the easy path. And let's be honest, we all tend to think like that sometimes if we're honest with ourselves, okay? And if you're sitting here watching this and thinking, I never think anything like that, Tell me how, and I don't necessarily believe you because I think we all sometimes feel hopeless. We start thinking these negative thoughts because it's the easiest thing to think. It's actually not necessarily easy to think positively and to actually create positive meanings, but it's important to do if we want to have good mental health. And to be honest, it's just as true to believe something positive as it can be to believe something negative. The only difference is that the negative belief can create catastrophic pain. If you are someone who does have a tendency to err on the negative, again, it could be that your brain is trying to help you. It, you know, it's an adaptive process that has come about to actually keep you alive, to keep you from experiencing pain, to keep you safe. But you have to question whether it's actually an adaptation that is working for you. Maybe it worked at one point in your life, but maybe it's not working for you anymore. Or periodically taking stock of the beliefs we're holding and the things that we're thinking, we can question whether they're working. Sometimes we've held on to beliefs for years that are not working for us and that just are not true. But they feel so true. They feel so like so much like home because this is what we've practiced experiencing. Let's say that you think you can't have any friends. Okay, this is a fact for you because let's say you never had any friends. You always struggled to make friends or you had a friend and then they abandoned you. More confirmation that you can't have friends. Complete nonsense. But you felt the feelings that go along with that. You felt the rejection. You've experienced it. You've got all this evidence. So therefore, why are you going to believe that actually you can make friends? That to you is purely untrue, providing you've got this particular thing. This is one example of a million that I could give, but this is one that I know people, it's quite common that people tend to struggle with sometimes. It doesn't mean that actually the belief that you can make friends is completely out of reach. And the reality of you making friends is completely out of reach. However, it's going to be very difficult to actually actualize that and create that reality if you're holding on to the old reality. So you need to actually be willing to let go of certain things in order to create other things. It's going to be very difficult to create other things if you have unconscious beliefs that are holding you back and constantly pulling you back and getting you to believe that it's impossible that you can change. I know that this can be really hard, especially if you've got a habit of self-sabotage and a strong inner critic, a really loud inner critic, which many of us do. Having good self-esteem and a good sense of self-worth, I don't necessarily think it's the norm, at least not in England. I, and I, to be honest, all over the world, I think it's something people struggle with, self-worth. People always say, you need to love yourself, you need to love yourself, but actually it's not necessarily that black and white. Loving yourself is a process, in my opinion, and something I'm always learning to do, and it's not something that you can, I believe you can get to a point and be like, yeah, completely love myself now. It's a constant unfolding and learning of life and life's going to throw you things along the way. The thing is as well, I would do want to say this, if you've had a lot of hardship in your life, if you've had a lot of trauma, this is not necessarily this hor horrifying thing. I mean, the experience itself might have been horrifying, but what I would like you to know is that trauma doesn't necessarily mean something's gone wrong. In fact, traumatic lives are just lives. Trauma is framed a lot of the time as if something has gone wrong if we've had a trauma, but who was who told you life was going to be perfect? Who told me life was going to be perfect? Life is not necessarily perfect and you know people experience traumas and they have been experiencing for millennia 
But the thing is, we frame it sometimes as if something's gone horribly wrong. Actually, we can get a lot of great things from trauma, you know? You can get a lot of empathy from trauma. If you have been treated really badly, sometimes you can think, I don't want to treat anyone that way. And it can actually develop you into a better person. It can actually give you an idea of your value system. Let's not also, like, dress it up as something it isn't, because traumatic instances are horrible, and they really aren't something that you want. No one wants them. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is that we can frame it in a positive way or a negative way. We can frame it as, okay, I've been traumatized, I'm never going to get over this. Or we can start to view it as, okay, well, what can I actually extract from this? What can I actually learn from this? What can I take from this in order to improve my life and push my life forward? Because just like Viktor Frankl with Man's Search for Meaning, he experienced such terrible things. Personally, I'm in awe of someone that can experience that and actually manage to find sense of life and not become bitter and twisted and everything else because if he did become those things I would not blame him. He is an inspiration to us all and he is one of many 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 people that have managed to do this and there's lots of people that are not as famous that haven't written books that have managed to transform their trauma and actually create meaning and have post-traumatic growth, which is a video that I will want to make in the future. I would love to hear what you think of it, actually. So if you could write in the comments and let me know what you think about this topic, and if it's something you struggle with to think positively and create meaning out of your life, I'd, I'd like to hear from you because it's something we can chat about. I really appreciate you watching this video, by the way. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd really love to have you on this channel. And also, if you could leave me a comment and like the video, it helps me out quite a bit. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you on the flip side. Ciao for now.